What's up, Loop Troop? Loopy Fist here, and today I am going to be bringing you guys part three of the alphabet challenge for Marvel Snap. We're going to be going through decks G, H, and I, and man, oh man, these decks are actually kind of crazy. Um, I actually want to challenge you guys right now. I have the decks on screen. Go ahead and pick a deck that you think is going to be the best deck. And I want you to actually head to the comment section down below and I want you to guess which one is going to be there. Leave a comment and I want to actually see if you guys get it right. It, it's I, I don't think many of you guys are going to get it right. It was actually crazy which one was actually the best deck and the way that we're going to value that is just the least amount of time it took to get the four cubes to actually move on to the next letter and man. You guys are in for one hell of a doozy. This was a fantastic little um, part of the challenge that we had going on here. So let's go ahead and get into the first deck, which obviously we're gonna be starting with G. So with G, I actually found out very, like, very fast that this really just stood for god awful deck. Uh, we were having a lot of trouble actually winning, even though we had Green Goblin, which worked really well with the hot location of the Space Throne. It just still wasn't working very well for me. We did manage to end up getting a clutch after about four to five games. And when I say clutch, this clutch was really only due to the fact that the enemy actually was kind of an ongoing deck and they had war and it just didn't work out for them. And in the end, we managed to get the two cubes, but it was still a hard five victory. And after that, we played many more games and we just didn't get a win. We got to one part where we almost got a win where we had pretty much a 50-50 situation. We had dropped our Green Goblin onto their Space Throne. And that was great, but they didn't really care. They were setting up a Wong Onslaught Mystique into Gambit, uh, Exodia Wipe. And yeah, we needed to go ahead and do the 50-50 and try our best to take out Wong with our Gambit because we were playing the G deck and we have Gambit. And I asked Chad, I said, yo, should we go for this? And, and they're like, no, don't do it. I'm like, I got to guys, I got to. If I don't, Wong, could, they, this could be catastrophic. So I decide to go for it and I don't take out Wong. I missed the 50 50 and I hit Green Goblin instead, which you would think, man, that's, that's okay. You still got, you know, you still try to win, but no, it was terrible. They started to play all of the pieces of Exodia <laughs> and they had them and we were going to get wiped. So we decided to hightail it out of there and it just wasn't very fun at that point. Like it was, it was, we were going to lose. It was that bad. Um, we lose a couple more games. Don't really need to talk about those. We're really just trying to get those last two cubes, but then we finally get a game where somebody makes one hell of a mistake. We have a back to the building. Uh, space throne and a peak situation the peak really screwed us over and not only that we also managed to get our hand leached we're not in a very good situation but we are winning baxter building and the, on the last turn baxter building we're winning with seven points they have a thor over there uh, if they have any of the hammers it could be catastrophic for us but we just believe that Mjolnir does not exist, right? We know that they're gonna wanna play on the Space Throne because they're gonna feel that we're gonna play on the Space Throne. But what they didn't expect was for us to give up the Space Throne and actually just go for the peak lane, uh, which only has seven power. And because we had three power coming from Baxter Building, we were able to take that with a Leech Gamora for the win. And we finally get out of these God awful Gs. Fantastic, you love to see it. Let's move on to the next deck, which actually is H. Now, here comes my favorite moment of the stream. So we actually have a deck that does not include Agatha Harkness. A lot of people really wanted me to put Agatha Harkness and I did a poll in my stream and who'd have, who'd have been surprised, Agatha actually manages to win the poll. So we end up taking out Craven the Hunter uh, and swapping in Agatha Harkness, which in all, you know, in all truthfulness, Agatha really should have been in in the first place. Now I'm looking back at it. Craven, we should have probably kept him out but until we ran out of cards that, you know, actually had H's on the card. So this was actually a really good swap, but you'll never guess what happened on the, egg, the first, you know what? You guys just watch, just watch and see what happens. He does something with Sunspot. 
I'm gonna try it. We might actually win this. There is a chance. He played way too many cards. He played way too many cards. Sunspot's not gonna get anything. We're not worrying about mid. And, and what did he play over here? Oh, and he did the order totally shit wrong. Oh, and he hit a Mr. Negative. Oh, this is awesome. We got this. We got this, boys. We got, oh yeah, we got this, guys. Who the fuck said put Agatha in the deck? So as you can see, we actually managed to take a dub on the first game we played with Agatha. I was not expecting that. Agatha came out and we were able to, you know, just pull, everything worked out really well for us with this deck. And I, I, all I can say is if you're, <laughs> This deck actually could be viable in some kind of ways. I mean, Agatha decks always are kind of okay. Um, they're really just there to generate cubage, but I was not expecting Agatha to actually have a one game win um, with this deck. Like I, the H's were not, I was not ready for this. This really cut this video down for me because I was expecting this to go on forever using Agatha. But honestly, this deck gets a solid S for me during this challenge because it went over so Okay, so moving on over to the I deck. I deck, honestly, it's kind of hard to to turn up to an event <laughs> right after the Agatha Harkness deck is just moving off the stage and try to, you know, stun the crowd. And that's exactly what the I deck just managed to not do. Um, they did everything except stun. It wasn't as bad as the G deck. Uh, we do end up losing quite a few games. But one of the worst case scenarios happens where we actually end up winning a game. But because I didn't, you know, snap when I needed to, and it was cause of a retreat, we don't get two cubes. We only get one cube, which does nothing for me. Because um, that either means we're gonna have to win two small cube, two small, two to three small cubage games or I'm going to have to win one game where I get four cubes because there's no way to get three cubes, right? I have to get a one and a two or three ones. So it really did help that I won this game right here. Um, it was a nice win, I guess I can say, uh, especially when we have Ironheart over on, <laughs> over on Space Throne and then we end up quaking, <laughs> quaking Bar Sinister. That was honestly my, that was one of the favorite points of the video as well, because we quake the mid and Bar Sinister is it filled up with whatever he put over there. Um, they're not good. He's not gonna be able to win that lane. It doesn't matter what he's gonna do. And I have Iron Man on dropping down on Bar Sinister and we're just gonna win. Like there's nothing he can do. This is going to be a GG and it was awesome. Um, I really enjoyed taking this dub but it was only for one cube. Luckily enough, the next game goes really well, right? We're both running Lockjaw and both of the locations are purely ass for Lockjaw, right? They're both ass. We have Rickety Bridge and we also have Space Throne on the right, but in the middle, we have New York. And that's pretty much the only spot that we can play our Lockjaws. Cause we can't play on Rickety Bridge, it's not gonna work. And you also really can't play on a space drone. It's not gonna, it's not gonna be possible, right? But me being me, I know that I have Quake. So I actually try to go for Quake to come out of Lockjaw to kind of swap things around and kind of screw him over. But what we actually get instead is me losing this lane but I do call out magic. And what magic does is allow me to, <laughs> it allows me to pull out the infinite into a Iceman. So what this does is it guarantees that I'm going to win. And I don't know if they had just like a bad, you know, a bad feeling or, you know, just something in their gut told them to leave, but they, they knew that like, they're not gonna be able to win Rickety Bridge. They were winning the mid lane, but I was going to win the tiebreaker if they didn't do anything 
you know so they had to do something and it turns out they just decided to just you know jettison themselves out of the game which is awesome for me because that means that i get to pass through that day's challenge and we're done with g h and i fantastic and we get to move on i mean I'm, I, I was honestly just kind of tired this was not as bad as i don't think it was as bad as the d's when we were playing back on the first day but it was still pretty tough i will say it was still pretty tough so you you really if you guys are doing this challenge look out for the g's and the i's uh and the best deck goes to the h's today so if you guys guessed h down in chat um kudos to you because i didn't think i had no idea it was going to be that good we had some pretty good synergy though so it kind of is what it is and you know i'm happy with that if you did enjoy the video please do me a favor and you know subscribe if you're not subscribed you know click my face it's right here or if you know if if you want to you know continue watching some more content we do have a video right here that you guys can also check out so whatever floats your boat we'll be seeing you in the next one peace guys